Welcome to Talking Tactics here at United24 Media where we discuss the latest developments in the Ukraine war from a strategical and military perspective. In the past weeks, France, Germany and the USA have announced the shipment of new military aid to Ukraine. The French AMX-10RC, around 40 German Martyr and around 50 American M2 Bradleys. The French and Germans call these things tanks. In English, they are called Armored Infantry Fighting Vehicles or IFVs. A contradiction? Not at all. All three models have characteristics that make them both a tank and also something else. Quick, maneuverable, heavily armored and well equipped with the Marder and the Bradley able to transport six infantrymen each. The delivery of these vehicles could play a decisive role in a new and much anticipated Ukrainian spring offensive. Now, it will take some time for these shipments to be prepared and also for Ukrainian personnel to learn how to use them. Let us use that time and take a deeper look. The Russian invasion is now in its second winter, the temperatures dropping well below zero. This makes fighting much more difficult because everybody's freezing and an offensive that might get you caught out somewhere in the open, even just for a couple of hours, could kill you. И, блядь, нам теперь будет очень полегче, очень полегче. Ну, конечно, горит там все знатно. Слава Украине! This is more a Russian problem. Ukraine has the home advantage. They have shorter distances, which makes it easier to rotate troops, to evacuate wounded and to resupply. But still, the majority of the front line is pretty dug in these days, with both sides waging a brutal artillery war, launching thousands of shells daily over the line of contact. The war right now for both sides is very inefficient, very deadly and eats through ammunition like a hungry trucker plows through a double cheeseburger. It doesn't mean that there is no movement at all. Russians are doing everything they can to take strategic cities like Bakhmut or Solidar. Ukraine is not only defending heroically but also attacking at certain points. But any large type of offensive is on pause until spring. But here's the thing, spring in Ukraine, it's not like spring anywhere else. Especially the first weeks are tricky, the snow and ice melt, and it's the beginning of what the Russians call Rasputitsa, in Ukrainian Bezdorizhia. This loosely translates to the time without roads, where the country's pathways melt into one big muddy blob. The Russians. Although one would think that because this happens really every single year, completely underestimated this when they launched their invasion on February of 2022. They ended up getting stuck everywhere. Some Russians got their equipment stolen by farmers and those were the lucky ones. Others got picked off by the Ukrainian military like birds on a wire. Now. How will the Martyr, the Bradley and the French AMX handle the weather? When defending, the mud is an advantage, but when you attack, it's a totally different story. The first side to beat the mud will win the spring campaign. We can only speculate. The German Martyr was battle-tested in Afghanistan where it proved quite effective, but it was against the Taliban, who were fighting with guerrilla tactics and not like a regular army. The French AMX was also deployed in Afghanistan as well as in Mali, and the Bradley is a real old war horse, deployed in the Second Gulf War and the US invasion of Iraq in 2003. It's an IFV that has already fought against its Russian counterpart, the BMP series, for example, during the Battle of Easting 73. Why does that matter? During this time, more Iraqi tanks were destroyed by Bradleys than by the larger and more powerful Abrams battle tank. The Bradley has already fought successfully against the exact Russian vehicles that they will face in Ukraine. The M2 Bradley was even specifically designed from the earliest planning stage to be able to penetrate the turret armor of the Soviet BMP-1 at a distance of more than 800 meters. The M2 Bradley has a 25mm cannon that can pack uranium-enriched ammunition. It can also load the tube-launched, optically-tracked, wire-guided, tank-busting missile called TOW, similar to the German Milan, which the newer versions of the German Marder can attach to the turret. It sounds complicated. Another way to put it, it's a missile attached to a wire. The wire sends a constant signal, making the person who sent it able to steer it in flight. 
The Martyr also has a 20mm auto cannon, which is not enough to engage in combat with a tank, but pretty deadly against infantry and light armored vehicles. The French AMX, which is the only one running on wheels, not on tracks, was mainly built for reconnaissance purposes and it has a 105mm cannon, the same caliber as the German Leopard 1 battle tank, one of the best ever built. So essentially, it's a small machine with a big powerful gun. However, in all previous deployments of these machines, there was no mud. So, let's talk about engines. While the Russian BMPs fulfill a similar purpose with similar characteristics, the Western models are more durable and also easier to repair. That's because they were built to be as long-lasting on the battlefield as possible, with all the parts made to be easily exchanged and replaced. The BMPs were designed to be produced fast, cheap and in huge quantities, making them more prone to damage and difficult to repair. All three new Ukrainian IFVs have sturdy diesel engines. The German model has the highest horsepower, around 600, but with 33 tons, it's also the heaviest. What's really important, all of them have several reverse gears, making them pretty fast when driving backwards, something that can easily mean the difference between life and death. Why? A lot of the battles right now take place in flat, rural areas. To stop the heavy winds, Ukrainians grew artificial tree lines called posadkas. These tree lines are now used to position troops, with battles often raging from one pasadka to another. With a powerful reverse acceleration, these IFVs will be able to navigate back and forth much more easily, either attacking and retreating, or transporting infantry from one position to another, while offering anti-tank and anti-infantry capabilities. So, what are the challenges? Like every machine, nothing is perfect. A problem that both the French and German model share, they can't aim and shoot while driving. Also, the German model doesn't have an air conditioner. Ukrainian summers can be hot and sticky, making it essentially a steel sauna. Also, the Ukraine war is, like all modern wars, a combined arms battle. It means both sides consider each part of the equipment, each unit, as part of a greater system that works best when these different elements support each other. The Marder, as well as the M2 Bradley, were designed as a support element to so-called main battle tanks. The Marder for the German Leopard and the Bradley for the American M1 Abrams. Lucky for Ukraine, just on the 11th of January, out of the blue, Polish President Andrzej Duda has announced the delivery of a whole company of German-made Leopard 2 battle tanks to Ukraine. Just a side fact, the NATO standard for a tank company is 14 tanks. The Leopard 2 is basically the Rolls Royce of tanks, a real beast, but 14 of them, of course, is not enough to win a war. Also, all shipment of Leopard tanks have to be greenlit by the German government. So for Berlin, it's decision time. Germany has long been hesitant with their military aid, but after announcing the shipment of martyrs, the go-ahead for the Leopard 2 could mark the beginning of a more decisive and committed political direction towards Kiev. Ukraine has almost been begging for this tank since the start of the war, and if the Germans wave this shipment through, it could open the door for other countries to follow Poland's example. Great Britain has already announced their intention to send tanks of type Challenger 2. Be sure to check out our next episode, where we will follow up on why these tanks are so important and how they will help Ukraine drive the Russians back to where they came from.